And I just have a hard time believing that if they were, like, truly that worried about it or, like, that scared because of whatever was going on, that they weren't mm-hmm. just going to, like, agree to some, like, parody film being made. Yeah, it. unless it was, like, a publicity stunt. Unless, right, unless it was a publicity stunt. Because yeah. otherwise, it's like, I, there's nothing in my life that has scared me that I thought, you know what I'm going to do while I'm scared? <laughs> Go make a funny movie about it. <laughs> I'm Paige. And I'm Megan. And this is Spooky Science Sisters. Hello, you're listening to Spooky Science Sisters, a podcast where we present to you a science-based and probably very giggly discussion on all things strange and unusual. In this episode, we will cover several spooky topics in our first ever short and spooky episode. Before we get to our discussion, though, it is time to do something spooky. So, Paige, did anything spooky happen to you in the last two weeks? Um, this isn't like super spooky but we just recorded the wendigo episode last week um and we were like both very very excited about it and if you listen to that episode you'll know that my husband like doesn't really believe so much in wendigos but like if there was like one thing that like one like paranormal type topic that like really freaked him out that would probably be it Mm -hmm. um and we were driving around the other day and found Wendigo Trail, which we are like just in the beginning stages of looking for a house. So like basically I'm just going to wait till a house shows up on Wendigo <laughs> Trail for us to purchase and that will be the house that we buy. <laughs> <laughs> like very excited about this yeah well and i was looking it's just like that little tiny section of street which is in like a, a nice part of town because it's you know near where i used to live and i loved living in that area but side that aside like the houses that are there like look like they're you know sort of about the right size and stuff for like a yeah. good starter home so and there aren't like a ton you're right it's like a very small street there's not a ton of houses <laughs> but like when one shows up i will be purchasing it <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah so it would be really awesome if like one went up for sale and it was like the perfect timing for you to purchase it it it's would very, be great <laughs> very exciting that's really all i have <laughs> great well, do you sort of spooky anything? that we like just did that though. yeah yeah did you have anything spooky this week uh nothing spooky so this will once again become spooky news slash megan story time <laughs> <laughs> much to Paige's dismay. <laughs> I've been doing videos on TikTok and most of them are ones that that cover things that we've talked about on the podcast. And so I did one on the Freddy Krueger true story, like about the, the Hmong people who died in their sleep. And yeah, it sort of went like semi- viral and yeah i'd say it definitely went viral <laughs> yeah so now it got like it's up to like over fifty thousand views <laughs> so basically everybody knows megan's face now yeah <laughs> yeah it's up to like over fifty thousand views we've got like we're coming up on like three thousand followers so it's sort of insane and yeah i basically did literally nothing like the last two days of the week last week because <laughs> i was just <laughs> distracted by like <laughs> watching little numbers tick away on my phone so i've been threatening Paige that you know that's how that's how we're gonna grow the podcast is via tiktok just despite her uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah in case you didn't listen to our randonautica episode tiktok is not my favorite thing. Yeah. It's mostly because her brother, my husband, and her best friend, Sarah, l- send Paige TikTok videos all the time. <laughs> and Paige is n- not a social media person. <laughs> Every time I get a text message from one of the three of you, there's like there's like a 50% chance it's going to be a TikTok video. And you already know this, but like, there's also like a 50% chance I'm not going to watch it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So Paige 
isn't against it. She's just not super interested in participating right. or, yeah, like watching TikTok videos. TikTok your hearts out. Yes. And if you are here because of TikTok and you found us because of TikTok, we're very excited. Uh, or at least I'm excited enough for the both of us. And <laughs> if you don't follow us on TikTok and you subscribe to the podcast or listen to the podcast, uh, we are at Spooky Science on there. Why I picked a third and different username as opposed to all of our other ones, unclear. But <laughs> but I'll be posting stuff that we do on the podcast, but also some like extra silly stuff. So yeah, you can go check us out there too if you want to see my face. <laughs> <laughs> but not Paige's face. Not my face. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So, like Paige said, this is going to be our first short and spooky episode, because if you've been listening to the podcast long enough, or you've listened to older episodes, you'll know that we used to do a short and spooky at the end, which was an extra spooky thing that we wanted to talk about, but that wasn't necessarily long enough for a full episode. And... Sometimes those ended up being like 20 minutes long on top of like an already hour and a half long episode. <laughs> so, so they were not so short. <laughs> Some of them are really good, though. So I, you know, I like that we did them. But what we decided to do was that we could save these that we find. And periodically, we will be doing short and spooky episodes where we spend some time talking about several different stories that have come out in the news or that we've been made aware of that are spooky, but again, don't necessarily warrant a full episode's discussion. So this is going to be the first of those. And I'm super pumped about it because I think the stuff that we found is really awesome. So Paige, do you want to do your first short and spooky story? Yes, I would love to. Um, so this is one of those that like isn't so short. But <laughs> <laughs> um, so I'm going to do the guy or ghost. And um, before we kind of get into the story of the the ghost, um, talk a little bit about like where Gyra is. And it's a small town in Australia. And it's halfway between Brisbane and Sydney. And I like always thought it was Brisbane. No, so it's not. I. It's Brisbane. <laughs> it's Brisbane. <laughs> um, thank you, Karen, because you said it correctly on the Monster Talk episode. And now I know. Uh, yeah. Well, <laughs> um, considering Karen is Australian, that would make sense. <laughs> yeah, right. I trust what she says. <laughs> um, and she actually and said that it's like slightly inland. So if you look at a map, it's like um, it doesn't really create a line between Brisbane and Sydney. It's more of like a triangle. It's, a, it's slightly inland from the other two. But anyways, it's a small it's a super small town in Australia. And this particular story took place uh, almost 100 years ago today, the day we're recording, because it took place in April 1921. Ooh, spooky. Yeah. It's an interesting case because it's really well documented. So there's a lot of um, like newspaper articles about it and a lot of photo documentation. Um, but we kind of found this story because of Karen Stalzno, who's been on our show twice now um the first time for the was it the roanoke episode yes and then she joined us um pretty recently for a ghost hunting episode as well and so she wrote an article about the gyra ghost and the name of that article is showers of stones and she also went and did a podcast episode on monster talk so if you're interested in this story after i'm done because i'm not going to be able to cover everything um you should check those two things out like I said, early April 1921, um, there's a family in Gyra who is woken up to the sound of thumpings and a stone shower pelting their cottage and smashing their windows. The stone showers not only continued through that night, but they also continued through the entire month of April. Um, they continued until eventually every window in the house was broken. The activity not only were these stone showers, but they also had reports of what they said were unseen hands thumping on walls. Um, they had rocks the size of bricks being thrown at their house. 
and they reported that their house was shaking from all of it. Uh, after the first night of, you know, these these stone showers, the family calls the police, um, which, like, I wonder if that's what I would do. <laughs> you know, I just had the exact same thought. <laughs> like, <laughs> proof that our brains are the, sa- are the same, because I was thinking, like, You'd really call the police if you heard some rocks hitting your house? like Right. I mean, I suppose if you're assuming that somebody's throwing them, then sure. But, like, I'm picturing this as, like, you know how we talked about the Kentucky meat shower? Like, the very first episode? <laughs> right. That's yeah. sort of what I'm picturing. Like, rocks just, like, showering their cottage. And I just don't know. I don't know that the police would be the place I would go. I'm not saying it's the wrong call. I just don't know that it was the call that I would make. I would probably just yeah. sit there and suffer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess. Well, okay. Oh, so it's not the first night, though. Like, did they have windows smashed the first night? Because I guess if somebody, if someone was just, like, chucking pebbles at my house, I'd be like, oh, it's just kids fucking around. And, like, I wouldn't think of anything. I wouldn't think anything of it. And I wouldn't call the police but like if on the first night somebody threw a rock hard enough to break a window and like you have it in the notes that some of these rocks were the size of bricks like yeah i'm calling the police even if it's only been one night yeah so it's my understanding that the stone showers started that first night and that's when they called the police and then Mm -hmm. it continued and like kind of progressed Mm -hmm. um so like I don't know. I can't say for sure whether or not windows were broken that very first night. Um, but like, there was definitely something going on with, yeah. you know, stone tree in the, the roof anyway. Um, right. But it is kind of funny though, be- too, because they, like, the way they describe it, and I think I had only looked into this a little bit because we've been planning on talking about this for a while, but this was, this was Paige's thing. And like, stone shower, like, that sounds like there's, like, to me, when I started reading this, I was like, oh, this is going to be a really weird one, like, to debunk, because to me, that makes me think, like, it was, like, raining rocks on their house, And that's know? how that's how I understand it as well. And that's how, um, I mean, even in, like, the art, the articles that I've read about it, it, that's how it's, I think that's how they described it. Okay. Okay, um, so it was. It wasn't just, like... Some rocks hitting their windows. It was like it sounded like it was like raining rocks on their house. That's how they reported it, is my understanding. Okay. Now, you okay. know, obviously, whether or not that's truly what was happening, it's hard to say. But it sounds like that's how it was reported. Okay. So yeah, the police, you know, they show up. They have a couple of theories, um, which I'll talk about in a little bit. However, when they try following up on these, they try to you know pin down a culprit. They really don't have any luck, and you know the activity just kind of continues. It continues when the police are on the property. Property. It continues when the family's there alone. Um, one night, the family has 40 people from their neighborhood and around the area surround the house watching it. The next night, they increase it to 80 people. They've got floods, floodlights, people have rifles, and the neighbors have actually formed like a human fence around the home to try to prevent any potential attackers from getting too close. And it still happens. The group hears this large, this large, like loud thumping sound. Um, it's stated that from those inside of the house, they, f- they seem to think that it's coming from the outside, but from those outside, they seem to think it's coming from the inside. Huh. I mean, it, yeah, I, I sort of know where this is going, but from, you know, looking at it a little before, but it's like, if you've got a, f- fence of people around the home and you're still hearing it that's like oh clue number one that it's coming from someone inside the house (laughs) right that's how i see it yeah so i mean obviously it's a ghost megan (laughs) 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 so then the activity begins or starts happening even during the day so one day the family returns to their home and this is like this one's kind of crazy to me this would totally freak me out <laughs> they they show up to their house after being gone they're out like i guess on the, like the their yard or on the farm working they're out working and they come back and they find their shutters some of the battens and boards from boarded up windows knocked down and piled up on the patio Oh, that's weird. Which, like, actually freaks me out way more than the stone showers. 
(laughs) Yeah, that's totally bizarre. And then it also starts to spread to neighboring homes. So homes... Yeah, homes were like abandoned after, you know, the extensive damage that had been caused to them. And there are reports that motor motorists who are passing by are getting hit by stones. Okay, so it's so spreading this, like, way further than I thought it did. Yeah, me too. And so there's like, and I didn't put all of this in here because I just like, I could have gone down a real rabbit hole. I could have uh-huh. talked about this forever. But um, they have like a series of other things that go, that kind of go weird with the neighborhood. It's like, you know, mm-hmm. a series of deaths or illnesses and like things that are kind of weird that are happening. And, and they're kind of, bl- I think it's like my understanding, they're kind of all just blaming it on the same thing. So like, you know, everything that's going on in the neighborhood is suddenly like suspect. It <laughs> can't just be like, oh. <laughs> That yeah, lady died because she was sick and old. <laughs> right. I, yeah, which, like, could just be you have something weird going on, and so, like, people start to suspect that everything going on in the neighborhood right. is weird. But, like, I – yeah, I had no idea that this was people abandoning their home levels of damage. <laughs> right. <laughs> and I don't even think I realized that it was spreading to other houses. So, that yeah, this is bizarre. Okay. I'm excited. <laughs> so before we get to because next i'm just going to talk about some of the theories and there are you know a couple more than i'm going to talk about but i'm just going to mm-hmm. talk about a couple of them um but like what you think someone who's living in the house is doing this is yeah. that your thought well, okay that was sort of the gist that i got from the stuff that i had read so spoiler alert that's one of the theories and i thought that it was just yeah somebody in the house who was fucking around Okay. But now I'm questioning it because I did not realize how extensive this was. All right. That was kind of what I figured as well. Like, mm-hmm. I sort of just thought it was, like, somebody playing this, like, mean prank that just got, like, way out of hand. Yeah. I mean, I guess – sorry, I had to burp. Oh, that's fine. I <laughs> muted my mic, like, four times, so I didn't have to burp in your ear. I guess <laughs> – I guess I could see it as being – a hoax that the family who lives in the house is perpetrating for the attention. That would be like my number one theory. Right. Right. Okay. Okay. Um, So I think you and I are going into this on the same page. Yes. Now, like I said, I'll go through some of some of the theories. The first one that I'll talk about is, is, um, you know, everybody's first thought is that it's a group of kids. It's a Mm -hmm. group of kids trying to cause some trouble. Um, and I don't, in my understanding is that there's like no real evidence for this. They don't find anyone. They just Mm -hmm. like kind of, they just assume, you know, it could be a bunch of kids because like that's where everybody's head goes first. Um, which like, you know, is believable, I suppose, but, but I don't have any reason to believe that that's necessarily what's happening yeah. here. Um, they probably would have had to like find, like blame it on an actual kid for me to 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 go with that. Sure. So Minnie, who is the Bowen family's twelve year old daughter, at one point reports that there's a man who had been chasing her and throwing rocks at her outside. And so, you know, one of the theories by the police is that this is the man who's causing the home destruction. Uh, the police, when they first arrive on the scene, they search for him. And, you know, unfortunately, the man has disappeared and the police aren't able to find him. Nobody ever saw this guy throwing rocks and chasing mm-hmm. Minnie. Um, it was just something that Minnie had reported happening. Okay. You can already tell where I'm going with this. <laughs> so then... Kind of to add to, I guess, like the mini theory. So that is one of the theories is that, you know, a lot of this is kind of centered around her. A lot of the um, things that happen only happen when she's there. So Mm -hmm. they start to believe that maybe Minnie is is, um, the perpetrator. And there's this man named Ben Davey, who's a spiritualist who comes, he's convinced he can help the family. Because at this point, they have like tons of people who just like want to help. And he comes and speaks with the family and discovers that Minnie's half sister passed away three months prior to all of this. Um, And so he becomes convinced that the house is haunted by Minnie's sister. There's a lot of rumors about how Minnie's sister died um things like congenital heart failure which was on the official death record death certificate um but there's also rumors of suicide um hmm. so it's already kind of bumpy maybe she was angry you, you know uh there's a lot of yeah. rumors surrounding her death and so 
when Ben is there, he urges Minnie to talk to her dead sister. And initially, she like, kind of says, like, I can't talk to my sister. She's dead. Mm -hmm. Um, But then eventually he, like, convinces her, I guess, to talk to her sister. And she claims that they have a short discussion. Um, And that her sister said, and I I didn't write this down, but I think her sister said something about, um, like, she had, like, a message for her to tell her mom or something like that. So they talk. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah, I mean, that's kind of it. At one point, Minnie confesses to hitting walls in the house with sticks Mm -hmm. and is she is actually like caught in the act of throwing rocks at the Mm -hmm. house but she goes on to say that she's not responsible for the whole thing some people think the confession was well i can't think of what that word is coerced thanks um (laughs) that it wasn't a true confession and think that like you know minnie had nothing to do with it some people think that minnie you know confessed to some of it so it must have been her But to this day, you know, nobody knows really for sure if it was Minnie, but she apparently goes on to live a pretty normal life, um, though some claim she has psychic and telekinesis powers. Of course. (laughs) Of course. So, yeah, I mean, that's kind of where I'm at. They, they, at one point, they send Minnie away Mm -hmm. to, like, go live with her grandma or something, Mm -hmm. and when she's gone the rock throwing kind of goes away and it follows Mm. her. And then I think at one point it like starts back up. So then they bring her back home. Um, But there's like a period of time while she's, where she's gone and it it just completely stops. And obviously, I mean, at this point, by the time she was like had kids and and settled down and had a family, it wasn't Mm -hmm. following her anymore. So I suspect that it is probably just Minnie or just like the family kind of playing some sort of like prank on yeah <laughs> well okay yeah so I had heard the thing about Minnie confessing to having done this and yeah that was definitely to me made me think okay well this is just her fucking around and then I do also remember seeing the thing that they sent her away and it followed her, which is like pretty, <laughs> pretty convincing evidence that it's her. Right. But yeah, that's the, the thing that's tough is the stuff about like, you know, she's throwing things as big as bricks at the house and like, right. Manages she's only 12. To, yeah. Like manages to pull this off. Even while people are surrounding the house one night and that like then she starts doing it to the rest of the neighborhood. So I sort of wonder if it's I wonder if a some of it is exaggerated over time because this was 100 years ago. So who knows if it was, you know, as crazy as what this says or if it's been ex- the stories have been exaggerated and it was really just like a few rocks and that would make more sense for it being an actual kid doing this. Right, right. Yeah, I'm also suspicious that it's the family. I thought of a third uh explanation which is like what if all their neighbors just like really fucking hated them? Right. <laughs> and I they were like trying too. to drive them out of the neighborhood. And so like even though they were surrounding the house that one night, it was like still the neighbors doing it because they're like trying to get rid of this family for some reason. Yeah, I mean that would be uh, that wouldn't surprise me either. I mean not yeah. that I not that it wouldn't surprise me. All oh, these people were terrible. I know nothing about them. Uh, um, but like but More yeah, just like it being like a, a hoax that's like, yeah, perpetrated yeah. by somebody outside and yeah, like trying to make this family feel terrible for some reason. Right. So I don't know. It would be like interesting to look at for that. It would be interesting to look at like what was the relationship of the family to With the other the people in the yeah. neighborhood. Yeah. Like Minnie sort of sounds like she's like having a rough time. Like they make her talk to this, you know, spiritualist. She potentially is given a hard time by the police like that's all really hard on a 12 year old and like her sister had just died so like kids act out (laughs) when they're upset about something so i yeah so that i think it's a person or people doing it whether it's actually Minnie, which i mean you know i don't fault her for it because it sounds like she's having a really rough go of it recently when this was happening um 
and during it. Well, or like, so is yeah. the family in general. Right, yeah. Or it's, like, the family, or it's, yeah, they're, for whatever reasons, their neighbors had some vendetta against them. I don't know. <laughs> I agree, yeah. I think, I mean, I think, I, I, I have a hard time believing Minnie did it entirely herself. But I right. do feel like she was probably involved in some way. Um, right. What I don't think it was, was the other theory, which is poltergeist. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I saw that in the notes and then you didn't specifically mention it. And I was like, oh, are we just not going to talk about that? But uh, we are. <laughs> yeah. I don't think there's a poltergeist living in these people's houses, breaking their windows with rocks or whatever. Like there are some extenuating circumstances here that seem like it's pretty pretty well set up for it to be a person doing this right or people right. doing this so uh, it's yeah also important to note that there was apparently like a parody film of this made while the investigation was still occurring which means like the family had to agree to it like the family agreed to making like this yeah. film being made during and I just have a hard time believing that if they were, like, truly that worried about it or, like, that scared because of whatever was going on, that they weren't mm -hmm. just going to, like, agree to some, like, parody film being made. Yeah, it. unless it was, like, a publicity stunt. Unless, right, unless it was a publicity stunt. Because yeah. otherwise, it's like, I, there's nothing in my life that has scared me that I thought, you know what I'm going to do while I'm scared? <laughs> Go make a funny movie about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah what was did karen have any thoughts to offer in her article about what she her, uh, any opinion on what might might have actually been going on um so it, 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 even in monster talk she talks about it and it it sounds like she's kind of in the same boat that we are mm -hmm. you know i probably not a poltergeist but that <laughs> that it sounds like it's possible that it could have been mini but it was likely you know people yeah doing. okay yeah huh it's such a weird story <laughs> yeah it is it is and i don't have any good answers for it but no but i i think it's a good enough answer to say it's people doing it's not it. a poltergeist yeah and i'm sure it would be a good one to like maybe it should have been a full episode we could have really dove in and <laughs> we still technically could <laughs> That's true. See if we could find out more about that family and, you know, what was going on leading up to this. So, right. Although, yeah, I mean, like, again, I feel like the death of one of their daughters is sort of information enough for <laughs> things not going great. So, yeah. All righty. Yeah. Well, that's that's Gyra Ghost. That's Gyra Ghost. <laughs> you have another ghost story, don't you? I do have another ghost story. So... Uh, I have another hundred year old ghost story, which is very excited. All very excited. It's very excited. The ghost story is excited. It's very <laughs> exciting. And I guess I shouldn't say the story itself. Well, the story is a hundred years old, but the actual events happened a little over a hundred years ago. So mm -hmm. this is a ghost story. Uh, that was actually published in a medical journal in 1921. So this got published in the American Journal of Ophthalmology by a man named William Wilmer. And it was about the experiences of one of his patients, who he just refers to as Mrs. H, and uh, her family's experiences during this as well. So when this actually happened was in 1912. And this may sound familiar to some of you because I also told the story on um, Historical AF podcast uh, a few weeks ago. So if you have listened to my guest appearance on there, you will hear me talk about this. <laughs> <laughs> this story starts out. This family, Mrs. H and her family, had recently moved into a new house or new house to them. It was an older house. And several sources say that it was pretty run down. And basically, immediately, they start to have spooky experiences. And there are some great quotes from the medical journal article regarding their experiences. So I'm going to read a couple of those. So the first is, 
Mr. H and I had not been in the house more than a couple of days when we felt very depressed. The house was overpoweringly quiet. So the house was not quiet for long, though. (laughs) So the next quote is, uh, one morning I heard footsteps in the room over my head. I hurried up the stairs. To my surprise, the room was empty. I passed into the next and then into all the rooms on that floor and then to the floor above to find that I was the only person in that part of the house. Sometimes after I've gone to bed, the noises from the storeroom are tremendous, as if furniture was being piled against the door, as if china was being moved about, and occasionally a long and fearful sigh or wail. (laughs) Sometimes, as I walk along the hall, I feel as if someone was following me, going to touch me. You cannot understand it if you've not experienced it, but it's real. (laughs) I am selling that house. (laughs) No, I'm not staying there. Like, this sounds terrible, and ju- yeah, like this is just the craziest story. So I thought, why the heck was this published in a medical journal? So after not long, it's her whole family. So Mrs. H, her husband, her children, their servants—they're all hearing noises. They're he- hearing footsteps. They're hearing strange voices. There is this great anecdote that she tells about her son coming into their dining room and asking why she was calling out to him. And Mrs. H says, I didn't call out for you at all. (laughs) And then he says, like, well, who was it? Like, who was making these loud pounding noises? Um, And, you know, he insisted that someone was calling for him, but, you know, there was no one there and it wasn't his mom. So things start to get worse. They start to feel weak. They're experiencing pain and headaches. Even their house plants were dying. <laughs> and- Wait, I think I know where we're going. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and then eventually they actually start to see quote unquote, ghosts in the house. So they say that they would wake up paralyzed from a deep sleep to see figures sitting at the foot of their bed staring at them. And they would feel like they were being held down. And so it's like that alone sounds like pretty classic sleep paralysis. Right. But like, absolutely. Coupled with everything else happening during the day, there's something else going on here. Right. And eventually they even start to see ghosts when they're awake. (laughs) So here's another quote. I just love these. On one occasion, in the middle of the morning, as I passed from the drawing room into the dining room, I was surprised to see at the further end of the drawing room coming towards me a strange woman, dark haired and dressed in black. As I walked steadily in on into the dining room to meet her, she disappeared. <laughs> like, what the fuck? <laughs> this is okay. terrifying. I know. It's like, it's so scary. But well, so are they are they cuz I mean I'm assuming at some point they see a doctor, yeah? Yes. That's are about they to yet? happen. Okay. Okay. It's about Sorry. to happen. Um did you not hear me? Did I not tell you about this before? I don't think so. Okay. Great. Well, then this is a surprise. Okay. So <laughs> So eventually, Mr. H tells his brother what's been going on, and some people report that Uh, his brother had actually come to visit him. But his brother is like, oh, this sounds familiar. And he had heard about something like this happening to a family before. And he says, hey, you should get your furnace checked out. (laughs) And lo and behold, they find that their old furnace uh, in their sort of rundown house had a faulty heater and was leaking carbon monoxide gas into the home which was causing all of their symptoms. And when they fixed it, everything stopped. (laughs) This is the second one of these stories that we've told. Yes, I know. Carbon monoxide is fucking terrifying. I know. Yeah. So I looked a little bit further into it. And yeah, it's totally legit that carbon... And they recognized it like it's in the 1921 article that it was the result of carbon monoxide poisoning. Um, Although it wasn't until like this story and the one we told before 
that I realized like just how extreme that could be. Yeah. Um, so it can cause audio, visual, even physical hallucinations. So feeling things touch your skin when nothing is there. And like you said, it still happens today. So we saw, you saw that story, which actually went viral on TikTok <laughs> about the man who was like finding the weird post-it notes in his apartment, yeah. like telling him like, that he had like a stalker or something. Yeah, him, basically. Like, and like yeah. that something about like his landlord being creepy or whatever. And mm -hmm. then it turns out it was him writing them to himself, but he didn't realize it. And like he was doing these things because there was a carbon monoxide leak in his house. I guess there was another woman who uh, was written about in a medical journal uh, in 2005 who collapsed in the shower after she thought she saw a ghost that scared her. But Turns out her gas water heater was improperly installed. <laughs> so it was also leaking carbon monoxide. <laughs> so yeah. this is the second, like I said, the second time we've talked about this. And uh -huh. This will be the second time that I will say carbon monoxide detectors are cheap and batteries yes. are cheap. And even if you can't afford, you know, because some people can't, 20 bucks, like I get it. I've been there. If yeah. you can't afford the $20 for a carbon monoxide detector, a lot of your like local fire departments will give you one for free. Please oh. get one and don't start your car in your garage and sit in your car. Don't heat your house with your car. Like, just don't do it. Don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> yes. It works for environmental health and safety. She knows. <laughs> she has an OSHA <laughs> certification. <laughs> She's the expert here on safety. But that is a super good tip that you can usually get them for free from the fire department. And I would guess that utilities companies probably provide them for free in some yeah, cases, Yeah, I believe too. they do. I believe they do. So, yeah, it is – it's serious. And – but stories like this, like the the, you know, the Mrs. H and her family – but then the later ones, like the guy writing the post-it notes, the woman who saw a ghost and collapsed in the shower, it just makes me wonder how many ghost stories that you hear are like, I mean, like the Mrs. H story, it's like everything that they experience, like you could make a horror movie out of that and not, you know, not have it be carbon monoxide in the end like have it be some evil spirit or whatever who's haunting them and like people would be like this is a great ghost story <laughs> like yeah. it's got all like everything that they experience is yeah like what people say that they experience in extreme hauntings so it just makes me feel like i feel like a lot of those are carbon monoxide <laughs> which like once again here we are like just as scary if not scarier that yeah. all these people are reporting ghost sightings and like, no, you're just poisoned. You're just being poisoned. <laughs> you're just being poisoned by your own house. <laughs> and you're probably lucky that you've woken up each morning. <laughs> right. <laughs> 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 yeah. So anyway, uh, I freaking love that story, which is why I'm telling it again on our podcast after telling it on Historical AF, because it's just like the greatest ghost story that I've ever heard. <laughs> it's a great, it is a great ghost story. Okay. So we are two stories into Short and Spooky. And Paige, you have another one about blue people. <laughs> <laughs> I do. Which I'm very excited about. <laughs> this one's going to be like, it's going to, Hold, hold true to the name it is truly short and it's well maybe not because it's not very spooky um i just thought it was kind of cool so it's funny because the first short and spooky i ever did was the kentucky meat shower and now here we are our very first short and spooky episode and i'm doing yet another story about kentucky um <laughs> What's happening there? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> so this is about the mysterious blue people of Kentucky. And there's actually like a sick, like a pretty significant number of people who had this blue skin. Uh, I mean, like significant in that like it was a lot more than I thought it was going to be. Um, but like, it's there aren't as many anymore. I'll get there. Uh, okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> Great. So in 1820, 
In a small eastern Kentucky settlement, there was a man by the name of Martin Fugate who had this striking indigo blue skin. Um, and Martin married a woman, and the woman he married is a like very pale-skinned redhead. And the two of them go on to have children. They have seven children, four of which have the same blue skin as their father. Um... And I don't know if you remember this, but and, like this isn't it's not the same thing. But do you remember uh-huh. like, I don't know, I want to say it was like five years ago, there was some guy who showed up like, on like a talk show or like the news or something who had blue skin and everyone like freaked out about it. Do you remember that? I have zero memory of <laughs> But now I'm gonna have to look it up. <laughs> he was like you, like putting like silver on his flaky skin or something. So this oh, is like no. a totally different thing. Okay. Um. But like, I just wanted to make sure everybody knew that because like, it's it's not the same. What that guy was doing is very different than what was happening here. Okay. Um. So this family. Um, and I, you know, I, I can't remember what year it was, but, um, modern genetics basically helps it solve the mystery of like what's mm-hmm. going on with the blue skin. And so the family apparently had a genetic condition called methemoglob. I'm going to have to say this twice before, because <laughs> I'm going to mess it up. Mm-hmm. Methemoglobinemia. Methemoglobinemia. There we go. Yeah. Methemoglobinemia. <laughs> <laughs> and it is that is a blood disorder where an abnormal amount of methemoglobin, a form of hemoglobin, is produced. I feel like every time we do a story uh, about, like, different weird things in your blood, like, I think we talked about one with the... What when did we talk about that? the Tasmanian devils? Oh, it was zombie apocalypse, right? Yeah, because it was like you had to have transmissible cancer or whatever, and it was like something yeah, in your blood yeah. or whatever. It's like every time we talk about it, it's like there is way more going on in your blood than I thought there was. <laughs> yeah, and there was another episode where I, I remember talking about hemoglobin too. Yeah. So, I, yeah, we've talked yeah. about this a but couple times. But there's also like multiple types of hemoglobin and all this stuff, and I was like, well, there's this is a lot. No wonder there's like entire... <laughs> There's an entire medical field about, like, just blood. (laughs) Right. (laughs) So, normally, methemoglobin levels are less than 1%. And I read that if it's between, like, 1% and 10%, you typically don't have any issues. Um, But most people are at less than 1%. At okay. 10 to 20 percent is where you'll start to see that blue skin. And then I think it said like upwards of 20 percent can can end up being like a fatal condition for people. Okay. But hemoglobin is responsible for distributing oxygen to the blood. Okay. In methemoglobinemia, the blood <laughs> <Good> is <job. laughs> hey, uh, the blood is not able to carry either it's not able to carry the oxygen or uh-huh. um, it's difficult for oxygen carrying hemoglobin to be released into the body tissue so their skin looks like a blue purple because it's not properly oxygenated oh which is like also kind of scary uh, <laughs> yeah. but it can be inherited like with the F- fugate family but it's a recessive gene so that's what i was going to say earlier is that um you know in the, in the 20s this family kind of you know, mixed up and all, all of their kids ended up, or a lot of the kids ended up having this blue skin. But as they've gone on to marry um, people from other families, um, if you don't have this recessive tra- trait, it dies off. And so mm-hmm. there's like not very many people who have this blue tinted skin anymore. Um, yeah. Now, this guy a couple years ago thought he, somebody thought he must have. But um, like I said, that was just him like using something on his skin to, get the flakes away or something <laughs> um, <I'm> sure <laughs> so it can be inherited but apparently it can also be caused by exposure to certain drugs hmm. so if ever your skin starts turning blue and you've started a new medication it might be worth bringing up to your doctor because <laughs> it might yeah. be that your skin is not properly oxygenated great well <laughs> There you go. Yeah, I mean, I figured it had to do something with not getting enough oxygen out to your body. Yeah. Although I, like, can't see how... Oh, yeah. I mean, even at the levels where, like, you said it takes above 20% or whatever to make it 
be something that would like be fatal or whatever but i feel like even below that like if, you, if it's enough to turn your skin blue <laughs> that's you what have I some would other think. problems <laughs> i would think that if your skin's blue like aren't you kind of dying yeah i don't know i mean i guess it can turn a little blue like when you get cold and stuff like that so i guess maybe they would just like be really susceptible to hypothermia probably but also i don't know like maybe i don't know (laughs) i don't either but it sounds it sounds it sounds scary enough to me yeah yeah (laughs) and that would be you know super weird also i love how you were talking about it (laughs) at one point you said the 20s (laughs) i was like uh the 1820s (laughs) yeah yeah (laughs) also like when i think 20s i think 1920s 1920s, which is funny because we're in the 20s we're in the 20s again so anyway i just thought that was a little bit funny because I was like, we're in the 20s again so now we're really gonna have to get specific <laughs> you get to guess which 20s i'm talking about <laughs> <laughs> don't worry <laughs> <laughs> yeah i guess lucky for them it wasn't like the 1720s because they probably would have gotten like burned as witches or something <laughs> right. at that point oof that does not normal so that's the mysterious blue people now uh um, great Two cryptids. I feel like I should have picked a different story to like stay on theme of like weird medical shit. <laughs> oh, I'm really excited. <laughs> Slash for this, like though. weird people living in the backwoods. But anyway, uh, that will be for next short and spooky. <laughs> <laughs> so as soon as we decided to do this, there's like I've got a lot of stories <laughs> saved up for future ones. Okay. So I came across an article from a page called Conversations in Science at Indiana University, and this is a list of seven species that people used to consider cryptids. And so if you'll remember, a cryptid is an animal or creature that all we have is what you would call cryptic evidence. There's no physical evidence for them existing. People haven't caught one or whatever. There's just, yeah, there's just cryptic evidence. There's just stories about them or like blurry photos in the case of some of them. (laughs) So yeah, or in the case of Bigfoot, lots of bear poop that people think is big Bigfoot poop. So I was mysterious about this on purpose because I thought it would be fun to make Paige try to guess what she thought some of these were. Or if you've heard of any of these before that that like people thought were were cryptids. Okay. So I have three thoughts. Okay. Um the first I'm pretty sure I had heard before that one of them is the Komodo dragon. <gasps> yes, that's one of them. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So the Komodo dragon, we can do each one of these as you go. Okay. So yeah, the Komodo dragon was considered a cryptid until 1910. Hmm. And yeah, until somebody caught one and killed one, as these things go, they have to have a specimen. Uh, but apparently the two live ones were put on display at the Bronx Zoo and inspired Marion C. Cooper to write uh, the 1933 King Kong. Huh. Yeah. So he must have been like, you know, strange giant animals from far away, and that inspired him to write King Kong. That's That's pretty cool. cool. Okay. That is cool. What's your next Um, one? The other two are guesses, but I feel good about them. Okay. Um, So my first guess is platypus. (gasps) You are right. You are so good at this. (laughs) I really hope my next one's right, too. <laughs> Excellent. I'm very proud. I wouldn't have... I looked at these and I I think I had heard a couple of them before, so I knew them, but I wouldn't have guessed the other ones. Yes. So the platypus people thought until the 18th century, or it wasn't until 1798, so like almost to the 19th century, people thought this is ridiculous. Like, no way that it could there be a creature that was like a combination of a duck, an otter, and a beaver. <laughs> <laughs> and the, the, that lays eggs. Like, that's really weird. That it's is a weird. Mammal. So platypuses are really weird. Is it platypuses or is it platypi? I think it's platypi. <laughs> 
do you actually know? Yeah, I'm like actually pretty damn sure it's platypi. Okay. <laughs> Am I right? I don't know. I don't know. Oh, okay. Uh oh. Platypuses. But some oh. people do use platypi, so I'm not totally okay. crazy. Okay. Was... Ready for my next guess? I'm ready for the next guess. Okay. So we talked about this one at work. And I, I was trying to think – we didn't talk about it being a cryptid. We were just talking about it. Okay. And I was trying to think of, like, the weirdest looking animals because I figured, like, those are those have got to be the ones. Uh-huh. Um, so my guess is narwhal. Oh, that would be a good one. But that one is actually not on the list. Damn or not it. on this list, at least. So this is seven species that used to be cryptids. This is – like, I – this is just one article that was put together. It's very possible that a narwhal – was considered a cryptid at one point. It had to have been. It's got a damn yeah. horn or unicorn <laughs> thing. <laughs> Send us your narwhal stories, everybody. Which, by the way, narwhals are like way bigger than I thought they were. Yeah, I mean, they're like whales. They're fucking huge. I don't know. They just like, I thought they were smaller. Anyways. <laughs> um, yeah, they're weird. I wouldn't. Yeah. Honestly, I think I think I've heard before that narwhals are one that like people still think isn't a real thing and like then they realize like that's actually an animal Damn weird. <laughs> okay that's like, uh, okay. all i really had okay great well we'll go through the other five uh briefly so uh one of the other ones on this list is an okapi which is also known apparently as the forest giraffe they're so <laughs> the cute <laughs> yeah so this is well the, the way that they describe it is a blend of a zebra, donkey, deer, and antelope. And, like, that's about right. It's got, like, stripy legs like a zebra, but then, like, also sort of looks like a deer. Yeah, I I agree <laughs> with that. <laughs> but, yeah, apparently it is genetically close, most closely linked to giraffes. And that's I funny. guess that Europeans used to call this the African unicorn. So they like didn't think that it was a real thing. So it wasn't until 1901 that a guy got an, a skeleton and a skin and sent it to the museum and the British Museum. And then Europeans were like, okay, fine. <laughs> <laughs> but the African people were like, um, we like fucking live with these. We know they're real. <laughs> <laughs> so fuck you, British Museum. Um, okay. <laughs> Uh, okay, because we're on the fourth one. Yeah, because you yeah. did guess two. Yeah. So the fourth one is the gorilla. So I I was really surprised about this one. The but gorilla? I actually, yeah. So I actually heard this when we did the Bigfoot episode because someone was reading old accounts of like of this like human like monster or whatever living in the forests and and yeah, people like didn't realize that didn't believe or didn't realize that cryptids, um, that mountain gorillas or that, that gorillas were real animals and they didn't accept it until 1847. And even one of them, I guess the mountain gorilla, people didn't think existed until 1902. Wow. Yeah. I never would have guessed that. Yeah. So it, it's like basically the gorilla was sort of like, a Bigfoot figure for a while. <laughs> okay. Number five is a giant squid. Oh, I was going to say that. I should have. I was like, no. <laughs> but yeah, it doesn't. Yeah. that one doesn't surprise me. Yeah. So that one, they didn't even get pictures of it until the first pictures were taken in 2004. I was going to say it and was it super recent. Yes. And it wasn't until 2006 that they actually like caught a live one so yeah like periodically they get like a dead one that that washes ashore and i think that's been happening for a long time but yeah i guess like some people still think the giant squid is a hoax though oh well, of course people still think coronavirus <laughs> is a hoax <laughs> <laughs> too real um <laughs> okay number six on the list is a thing i don't know how to pronounce at all it's a bundigas Bondigazoo. Bondigazoo. B O N D E G E Z O U. I don't know. Either way, it is. Bondigazoo. Bondigazoo. Oh, you're probably right. 
Or you are right. You looked it up. Oh, my uh, God. He's so cute. I know. He's like a little... He sort of looks like a koala. Uh, but he is from Western Papua New Guinea. And apparently has like some tie to their mythology or like their belief in some like ancestral spirits. They believe that they live in these animals. So that's sort of why they people didn't think that they were a real thing. And they didn't even... The first picture wasn't even taken until the 1980s. Oh, he's so yeah. precious. I know, but they live in trees and they are a marsupial. Tree kangaroo. So cute. It says, this says, a tree dwelling marsupial that looked like a tiny man. He's <laughs> 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 like basically a living teddy bear. They're really cute. I guess they walk around on two legs. Oh, that would make freak me out. I would think that was fake. Wow. Oh, he's so precious. He's just a little kangaroo. He just looks like a teddy bear roo. A teddy bear roo. Uh, and then funny that you say kangaroo because the kangaroo is the last one on the list. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> I, that one, I, and it makes some sense, I guess. Yeah. So I guess uh, the first description of a kangaroo... And again, this is all like the first description by white people. Like I'm sure the indigenous people have known about kangaroos for much, much longer. It was made in 1499 and was described as, and this is a quote from this article, a monstrous beast with the head of a fox, the hands of a man, the tail of a monkey, and a bag that's used to carry its <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's like, geez, oh, peace. So yeah, I guess it wasn't until the 17... 17- 70s that they sort of rediscovered the kangaroo and uh it became an official species that people did not think was fake so So wait people believed in the kangaroo before they believed in the gorilla yep (laughs) huh (laughs) interesting yeah gorillas until 1847 that's crazy 1770 so i don't know i think i think gorillas just sort of live in like really remote areas like up in the mountains or the forest yeah. and they're pretty shy so people just didn't like they only saw them infrequently and you know i i can see how you'd see a gorilla and <laughs> already be a little bit nervous about being you know out in the middle of the forest and think that it was something crazy well that is everything that i have that was super fun i feel like i learned a lot in that time i did too <laughs> Well, that wraps up our first short and spooky episode. Come back in two weeks when we chat with author KT Katzman about werewolves. If you liked this episode, hit subscribe and share with a friend. You can find us on Twitter and Instagram at Spooky SciPod, Facebook at Spooky Science Sisters, and at our website, SpookySciencesisters.com. If you have any questions about previous topics or ideas for future episodes, email us at SpookySciencesisters at gmail.com. As always, thanks for listening and stay spooky. This podcast is a part of Straight Up Strange Productions. Discover more shows like this one at straightupstrange.com.